All right, folks, here we are in Photo Tools 2.6 from On One Software. And uh, I wanted to use this HDR image of this uh, boat that I shot in Iowa as an example because HDR presets are a brand new feature in Photo Tools 2.6. It's a, it's a really cool new feature because HDR is becoming more and more mainstream every day. And it's good to see a company like On One Software embracing HDR and running with it. Um, you know, as you start getting familiar with the, the layout here in Photo Tools, you'll see that you've got a before and after image right here. Uh, they're the same right now. I haven't added any, any kind of filter or anything like that. You've got your stacks over here, and uh, you've got a masking option down here if you want to do some brush work, and I'll, we'll get to that in a second. You've got a, a before and after uh, right here of each preset, and you'll see as I you know go through each different one, they change and let you know kind of what that filter is going to be doing before you want to uh, throw it over to an image up here. Um, since this is an HDR image, I'm just going to stay here in HDR enhancers. But you can see that if I had a, a portrait, I could go to portrait enhancers. There's 39 filters just in that category alone. And you can go through all these other ones as well just to kind of get the look that you're looking for. So uh, go back down here to HDR enhancers. There's 14 of them in here. And I'm just going to kind of highlight each one and go through and see if I can find one that I like. <clears throat> uh, let's see. I kind of like this. Uh, uh, we'll go with this grunge filter here. Uh, once I've landed on one that I want to try out, I have some options over here. I can do normal, heavy, or bright. In this case, I'm just going to stick with normal. And uh, when I'm ready, I'll double click it. And it's going to add it to this image up here. And there you go. That's uh, the before and the after and if I'm happy with that I can just you know click apply and be done with it but what if I think that's too heavy I think I might have lost some uh, some shadow details in the tree over here and possibly in the boat and uh, you know might just be applied a little bit too hev heavily in those areas what I can do is come up here to my stack which is made up of my original image and the grunge filter and with that grunge filter highlighted I can change the uh, fade slider here and go back and forth until I see, uh, until I get it to where I want it. And in this case, I'll probably stop right about 65 there, 64, somewhere around there. And um, if I still am not happy with this, the details in the tree over here, I can come down here to, uh, to masking. And with my brush selected right here, I can actually go in, I can adjust the brush size, make it as small or large as I want, change the feathering and the opacity, I can come over here and make sure that I'm painting out. I'm just going to paint that filter out of the trees over here. And then uh, bring my brush size down and get some of the detail back in the boat right here. And uh, there you go. That's, a, that's as easy as it is. I mean, it, it couldn't be any simpler. So. If I'm happy with that, again, I'll just export it out, but I want to take one uh, quick moment here to show you the presets. So I'll come up here to my grunge filter, and I'm just going to delete that out and go back to my original and take my, uh, my hand out here so I can move this around if I need to and, you know, navigate around the, uh, the menu here. And I'm actually going to come over here to presets and again go down to presets for HDR. And these are some uh, presets that, that my buddy Brian Matias made, which are uh, really cool for HDR. These are just uh, collections of different filters that are stacked up, uh, one on top of another. So, you know, for this image, let's just go with this, um, uh, let's go with this Aussie Cry one. So I'll double click that. I don't know if I'm going to like this or not. I'm just kind of guessing at this. But I can, I can also bet that <clears throat> with all these different uh, options in the uh, filters, I can find something that I like by mixing them together. So as you can see over here, uh, this preset is made up with uh, my original image, one called uh, Thermopylae, uh, one called High Key Color, and uh, one called Cyberpunk. So what I'll do is uh, I'm just going to turn this one off, turn this one off, and come down here to Thermopylae and figure out where I want that. <clears throat> you know, I, I kind of like the, uh, the warmth that it's bringing to the image. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so I'll, uh, I'll keep that, and I'll adjust it to about 30% here. 
Now I'm going to come up to uh, high key color and turn that on and adjust that up as needed. You can see if I take it too far it's blowing the whites out and the blacks. So I'm going to make sure to, to stay away from that. So maybe about 32 percent there. Then I'm going to come up here to Cyberpunk and add that. And that's uh, that's bringing in a lot of uh, you know kind of a blue hue into my greens and in the whites and everything. So uh, I'm going to bring that down you know just to it's kind of uh, having an adverse effect here. It's taking uh, an image that I warmed up with uh, the Thermopylae filter and then cooling it back down and adding some uh, some other hues to it as well. So maybe I, I like it in the grass but nowhere else. So now what I'll do is with Cyberpunk selected, I'll come down here to my masking with uh, Paint Out, grab my brush down here, and I'm just going to make my brush size larger there and just paint this filter out around these whites. And maybe take it out of these, uh, these trees a little bit. warm up the, the foreground here just a tad. Again, I'm only painting at 48% uh, opacity here. And if I change my mind, I can uh, paint it back in by just going over it once more. And that's how it works. Uh, once you're done with that, you just hit apply here and it will uh, take the image back into Photoshop and apply the filter. And it usually works pretty quick here. So we'll just uh, give it a second. And wait for it to, to work away. I'm using a, a full res image here and um, that'll that'll take a little bit longer than if you're using a you know a web sized image but uh, we'll still give it a chance to, to load here pretty quick. <clears throat> All right should just be a uh, just another couple moments here. <clears throat> I have found that uh, using the presets will, will take a bit longer than normal if you're just using one filter. The presets are made up of a bunch of filters, so it has to individually add each one to it. But as you can see, once I'm finished here, I've got a new layer called Photo Tools 2.6, so I can uh, adjust that on or off. And, you know, there might be uh, parts of that image that I don't like. Let's say here I want to bring back in my original sky. So I've added a, a white mask. I'm going to make sure that I'm painting with black. And I'm just going to go over my sky here with a 50% opacity brush in this case. And uh, I noticed that I lost some detail by adding the photo tools in there. So I'm just going to bring that detail back into the sky back here. <clears throat> I think I might, you know, paint out some more of this uh, this boat. Just bring the original back in there. All right, maybe some of this tree. And I'm constantly kind of looking back and forth at my histogram here to see if I'm bringing that detail back in in the blacks. And you can see it. Maybe you can see it subtly changing. And. Uh, you know, I've lost some blacks, but it's nothing that I'm too worried about in this case. Some of them might be down here in the boat, just like I mentioned before. But um, that's it. That is uh, Photo Tools. It'll, it's a really good program just to give your image that extra pop and to make it stand out above the crowd. But uh, get it, uh, play around with it. That, that's half the fun, and I uh, hope you enjoy it.